November 25th, 2023, Jeremy Sanchez, his wife Elise, and their 10-year-old daughter Katrina took off after sunset, heading home from a Thanksgiving trip. But minutes later, their Piper Cherokee, registered November 7763, whiskey vanished into the darkness near Mertz in Texas. No distress call, just a crash alert from a phone. By morning, all three were found dead. The aircraft was intact, the engine was running. So why did it crash? Investigators would uncover a simple but deadly mistake, one that's claimed countless pilots before. The Piper PA-28-180 Cherokee B is a staple in general aviation, a straightforward, dependable aircraft ideal for short trips and basic flight training. But its simplicity comes with trade-offs. Built in 1964, this model lacks modern safeguards. No autopilot, no terrain awareness system, no synthetic vision. Even fuel management is manual, requiring the pilot to switch tanks mid-flight, a small task that becomes critical under stress. In the wrong context, these limitations don't just matter. They can be unforgiving. Jeremy Sanchez, the pilot, was legally allowed to fly under visual flight rules. But the reality of his journey quickly departed from the legal minimums. After leaving Las Cruces, he made an unplanned stop in Fort Stockton due to worsening weather. His wife even sent a photo showing the aircraft beneath low clouds and visible moisture. A second unplanned stop followed in Big Lake, where he waited for over two and a half hours before launching again, this time after sunset. That final leg, Big Lake to Bulverde, was only 250 miles, but it took place under some of the most treacherous conditions a VFR pilot can face. Darkness, overcast skies, and no visible horizon. Legally, the flight was still VFR. Practically, it was night IMC, conditions that mimic flying inside a cloud. Sanchez wasn't instrument rated and had logged only 4.5 hours of night flying. By pressing on, he was gambling with spatial awareness, depth perception, and his ability to stay in control without outside visual cues. It's a scenario flight instructors warn about repeatedly, and one that statistics show often ends just like this. At 6.18 p.m., Jeremy Sanchez's Piper Cherokee departed Big Lake Airport for the final leg of a long, weather-challenged day. The timing alone was problematic. Night had already fallen, and the route ahead was covered in low clouds and near-total darkness. According to ADSB data, the aircraft initially climbed to 3,900 feet, but quickly descended, leveling off between 3,000 and 3,700 feet barely 1,000 feet above the hilly terrain of Erion County. That altitude, in combination with the environmental conditions, was dangerously low. Over flat land during the day, it might have been safe. Over rugged terrain at night, with no visual horizon, it left almost no room for error. The aircraft's track showed shallow maneuvering, maintaining a generally southeast heading until the final minute. At around 6.35 p.m., the plane began a slow left turn, which gradually tightened. Ground speed increased. Then, in the final four seconds, the rate of turn sharply increased and the descent angle steepened. There was no radio distress call, no sign of attempted recovery. Seconds later, the plane impacted the ground at a shallow angle and high speed, cutting a nearly 200-foot swath through trees and brush. The crash site told investigators a quiet but clear story. The left wing hit a tree first, shearing off. The plane came to rest inverted. There was no post-impact fire, and the engine showed no signs of failure. The evidence pointed not to a mechanical breakdown, but to something more insidious. Loss of control in flight, likely due to spatial disorientation. In the final moments, Sanchez may have believed he was in level flight, until the terrain rose up to meet him. It's a hauntingly common pattern in general aviation. Night flying, especially without a visible horizon, can trick the senses in ways that even experienced pilots struggle to overcome. The brain loses its frame of reference. Turns feel level. Descents feel stable. But the airplane doesn't lie. It follows the laws of physics, not the instincts of the inner ear. So how did it come to this? 
The aircraft was functioning. The route was familiar, yet the flight still ended in disaster. To understand that, we have to look more closely, not at the airplane, but at the pilot, his background, his experience, and the quiet decisions made under pressure. Jeremy Sanchez was, by all accounts, a cautious and responsible private pilot. At 36, he had nearly 95 flight hours, almost all in the very aircraft he flew that night. His recent flight review was current, and he had just completed several legs of a cross-country trip with his family. But the fatal vulnerability wasn't his character. It was his level of experience, particularly with flying at night and in degraded visual conditions. Critically, Sanchez was not instrument rated. He had logged only 4.5 hours of night flying and just over three hours of simulated instrument time, barely the minimum exposure to conditions that require complete reliance on flight instruments. According to FAA guidance, pilots without instrument training are strongly discouraged from flying in reduced visibility or at night without a visible horizon. Yet that's precisely what happened on the final leg from Big Lake to Bull Verde. The weather briefing Sanchez received included alerts about marginal VFR and instrument meteorological conditions along the route, especially in the area around Mertzon. Reports showed ceilings as low as 1,000 feet above ground level with overcast skies and minimal surface lighting. This created what pilots refer to as Night IMC, a visual trap where the sky and terrain are indistinguishable, even if visibility technically remains legal for VFR flight. Despite these warnings, Sanchez chose to take off into full darkness. The motive is understandable. He had a wife and daughter with him, and they were heading home after the holiday. Delaying would have meant another night away, another night of uncertainty. That subtle pressure, what's often called get there itis is one of general aviation's most common risk factors. It doesn't feel like a dangerous impulse in the moment. It just feels like a reasonable decision to push ahead. But that decision had cascading consequences. Flying at 3,500 feet, barely 1,000 feet above the undulating terrain, offered no safety buffer. It appears he may have been trying to stay beneath the cloud layer to retain visual contact with the ground, a known but risky technique when terrain rises unexpectedly. Flying low at night in poor conditions demands constant focus and mental workload, especially for a pilot without formal training to interpret flight instruments in place of visual cues. There's also the possibility of small distractions turning into big threats. The Piper Cherokee B requires the pilot to switch fuel tanks manually during flight. While no evidence of fuel starvation was found, investigators noted that even a momentary engine hesitation caused by a delayed tank switch or lapse in attention could have triggered a spike in stress or confusion. Under night IMC, that's all it takes for disorientation to set in. Spatial disorientation is silent, rapid, and deadly. The inner ear plays tricks. What feels like level flight may actually be a gradual bank. A gentle turn can morph into a tightening spiral. By the time a pilot realizes they're in trouble, if they do at all, altitude has vanished, and recovery becomes impossible without instrument proficiency. Sanchez had no radio communication with air traffic control and did not request flight following. He was alone in the air, making decisions in the dark, with no margin for error. It's important to say this clearly. Jeremy Sanchez did not act recklessly. His actions were shaped by hope, responsibility, and the desire to get his family home. But the environment he chose to fly into, dark skies, overcast ceilings, and rising terrain, demanded skills and training he didn't have. In aviation, even small decisions carry enormous weight, and this time, the consequences were irreversible. The NTSB's conclusion was sobering but clear. The crash of November 7th was caused by the non-instrument rated pilot's continued flight into night instrument meteorological conditions, leading to spatial disorientation and loss of control. Contributing to the accident was the pilot's overconfidence, likely a product of familiarity with his aircraft and a desire to complete the flight despite deteriorating conditions. Importantly, investigators found no sign of mechanical failure. The engine was working. The airframe was intact. The aircraft could have completed the journey if the environment had been suitable and if the pilot had been equipped to fly in it. This tragedy isn't just about one flight. 
It's about a pattern in general aviation. Night VFR over dark, unlit terrain can be just as disorienting and dangerous as flying through clouds. And without an instrument rating, a pilot has no reliable tools to stay oriented once the visual cues disappear. Flying by feel in these conditions is like walking blindfolded near a cliff. You don't realize you're off balance until it's far too late. There are hard lessons here. Weather briefings must be taken seriously, even when the route seems familiar. Pressure to just get home must be resisted, no matter how reasonable it feels in the moment. And non-instrument rated pilots should treat any flight after sunset over rural terrain with extreme caution. It is often not the distance or the aircraft that kills. It's the environment and the silent, creeping disorientation it creates. Technology, ironically, played its most useful role only after the crash. The iPhone crash detection system triggered the emergency response, helping authorities locate the wreckage quickly. But even the most advanced tools can't save a flight once control is lost. Three lives were lost that night. Jeremy, Elise, and Katrina Sanchez. Their story is a painful reminder of how aviation decisions, even quiet and seemingly minor ones, can ripple into tragedy. But if their loss prompts even one pilot to pause, reconsider, and choose caution over urgency, then perhaps their memory can help save others.